Hello comparison test viewers and welcome back to another All Cars Everyday video. You guys voted in the community tab on what comparison test you wanted to see this week. So here I am standing with the brand new 2020 Kia Sedona. This van's goal is to dethrone the current champion, the 2020 Honda Odyssey. Here is the 2020 Honda Odyssey and it's already taken down the likes of the Toyota Sienna and Chrysler Pacifica. So if it can take down the Sedona, that means it's the best minivan for sale on the market. I'm evaluating the vans on a scale from one to five in seven different categories for a possible total of 35 points per van at the end of the video. Furthermore, I'm comparing specific trims of each van and I won't be adding any options or packages to those trims to keep the comparison test as fair as possible. More specifically, I'm comparing the Sedona SX to the Odyssey EXL. With that out of the way, let's look at our first category, which is value. The 2020 Kia Sedona SX starts at $41,300. It's the most expensive of the vans I've tested, but this is also the top trim Sedona. Other vans can top nearly $50,000. So though the Sedona is the most expensive van I've compared, it has the potential to be the best value proposition, depending on what features it can offer at this price point. And we all know the Koreans aren't skimpy with their standard equipment. On the outside, both sliding doors are powered, which is a must for families. The tailgate is powered too, but it also has a hands-free feature that allows the driver to simply stand behind the van with the Kia in their pocket and it will automatically open. It's particularly useful if your hands are full. The side view mirrors are also heated to prevent fog buildup and those units are also power folding, something that's missing from the Odyssey EXL, but we'll get to that van in a second. Christmas tree shoppers will be thrilled to find roof rails on top of the Sedona SX and the van has 18 inch machined alloy wheels. The Sedona has smart welcome, a feature that lights up the door handles and unfolds the power mirrors when the van detects your smart key approaching, a feature I've seen on other Kia models. The key also allows seamless access to the van without ever having to touch the fob to lock or unlock the Sedona. The exterior lights are exclusively LED, including auto leveling headlights, tail lights, fog lights, and positioning lights that are a Kia signature. A feature that wasn't present on any van I've tested so far is called low beam assist, which turns the headlight beams into corners as you turn the steering wheel, improving visibility. The inside is all leather and the front two seats are both heated and ventilated. The driver's seat gets eight ways of power adjustment with four ways of lumbar support and a memory function for the seat and external mirror positions. The passenger gets eight ways of power adjustment as well, but this seat also has a chauffeur switch on the side of the seat that allows the driver to tilt it forward in one motion for extra room for second seat passengers. Let's check out the technology in the Sedona, which consists of Kia's UVO infotainment system on an 8-inch screen in the dashboard. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, and navigation. Many of these features respond to the voice activation system. Behind the steering wheel is a 3.5-inch LCD screen between two analog gauges called SuperVision that displays key driver information like trip distance, fuel economy, and vehicle diagnostics. Audio in the Sedona is played through a clear Harman Kardon audio system with eight speakers including a subwoofer and amplifier. The Sedona has a ton of convenience features standard, including a sunroof, an auto dimming rear view mirror with home link, an electronic parking brake, express windows for the first two rows, and sunshades for the rear two rows. Even more significantly, it has a heated steering wheel and a cooled glove box, so passengers can keep their drinks cold if need be. I haven't seen this feature at this price level, and the heated steering wheel tends to be rare as well. Furthermore, there is a tri-zone automatic climate control system, push button start, a wireless phone charger for those who have phones with that capability, and plenty of places to plug in. There are three quick charge USB ports, two 110 volt outlets and three traditional 12 volt outlets inside. Even though the top of the line Kia is more expensive than the Odyssey, it has more than its fair share of features to cover the extra MSRP. Between the exterior lighting, extra seat functions, heated wheel and cooled glove box and navigation, just to name a few, the Kia clearly gives you more for the money. It's getting a 4.7 out of 5 for the value category. The 2020 Honda Odyssey EXL is $37,960 before options. For that price, the outside of the van has halogen headlights, fog lights, and the tailgate and sliding doors are powered, as is to be expected at this price point. The Odyssey also has 18-inch wheels, LED taillights and DRLs, heated side mirrors with memory and reverse gear tilt-down, and the headlights turn on automatically with the windshield wipers. In classic Honda fashion, it also has programmable remote entry and smart entry with walkaway auto lock. It allows you to simply walk away from your Odyssey with the key in your pocket, and it will lock itself once once you've left an 8-foot radius. On the inside, leather and a sunroof are two big ticket items like in the Sedona, but the Odyssey has more power adjustment options for the driver's seat with 12 ways and lumbar support. The passenger has less though at 4 ways powered. The front two seats are also heated and the driver's seat has a two position memory function. The steering wheel is leather with buttons for the infotainment system. Like the Sedona, the rear view mirror is auto dimming. Additional features include push button start, home link, three USB ports and three 12 volt outlets, as well as tri-zone automatic climate control. The kids rows also get sunshades 
and the middle row gets one touch windows. Naturally, so do the driver and front passenger. On to the multimedia and sound system. The touch screen in the dashboard is eight inches. On it are Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, Sirius XM on a subscription and HD radio. Music is blasted into the cabin through a 160 watt seven speaker sound system with a subwoofer. The gauge cluster has two analog gauges on the sides with a bigger driver information center in the middle. One feature that is absent on the Sedona is cabin control. It allows rear passengers to send music, destinations, and open the rear part of the tri-zone climate control from their smartphone. The Odyssey won the value segment against both the Sienna and Pacifica last test, but here it doesn't hold up as well. It maintains a 4.4. We'll be taking a look at the standard active safety features as well as the IIHS ratings of both minivans in this segment. The Sedona has a parking distance monitor, a surround view camera, forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, driver attention warning, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic warning, automatic high beams, and a smart cruise control system with stop and go. The IIHS rates the Sedona as a top safety pick, with good ratings everywhere except headlights, where the score ranges from poor to good. It also scored acceptable in the passenger side small overlap and ease of use for the child seat anchors. The Odyssey has very similar active safety features and even scores close to it in IIHS results. Included on the Honda are a collision mitigation system, a road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring with cross traffic monitor, and automatic high beams. The IIHS also rates the Odyssey as a top safety pick, with good ratings everywhere except headlights, where the score ranges from poor all the way to acceptable. These were very evenly matched in this category, so they both get a 4.7. The Sedona has Kia Hyundai's traditional 3.3 liter V6 with 276 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque. The power is routed to the front wheels via an 8-speed automatic transmission. Though it may not be the fastest combination, it's a perfectly fine powertrain and it's able to get to 60 miles per hour from a standstill in 8.3 seconds. The Odyssey has a slightly larger 3.5 liter V6 with 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. The engine is a more modern unit as it supports cylinder deactivation in the name of fuel economy. The transmission is also a clear product of the late 2000s. 2010s as it has 10 forward speeds and pedal shifters, again in the name of fuel economy. The Odyssey is quick, even for a car or SUV. It's able to reach 60 miles per hour in 6.9 seconds. The advantage goes to the Odyssey here as it gets a 5 and the Sedona gets a 4. Though the subjective features of the Sedona's powertrain are alright, it's the slowest minivan I've seen this year by over a second. Other vans are passing it by when it comes to transmission choice. The Sedona gets 18 miles per gallon in the city and 24 on the highway for a combined 21 miles per gallon in EPA testing. The Odyssey one-ups it here with 19 in the city and a big gap of 28 on the highway for a combined 22 miles per gallon. Credit that win to stop-start technology and two more gears to maximize highway MPG. The Sedona will get a 4 and the Odyssey gets a 4.5. In relation to the other vans in the market, the Odyssey is still tied for class leading and the Sedona brings up the rear versus the Pacifica and Sienna. I get this statistic from Consumer Reports, which predicts new car reliability based on historical trends in their testing. The Sedona is rated the highest score of much better than average. Unfortunately, the Odyssey is rated as much worse than average from the company. It's my experience that Honda vehicles are far, far more reliable than this would have you know, but this is my only objective way to rate reliability. If I go about giving my opinion on reliability and assigning points to that instead, people will have a fit. I assign a half point to each step up or down in Consumer Reports rankings, so that means the Sedona gets the full five and the Odyssey gets a three. This is the only subjective category I rate, so if you disagree with what I think looks good or bad, feel free to adjust points according to your tastes when I rate the vans. I think both vans have generally very attractive designs, of which the same cannot be said for other contenders in this segment, but I won't name names. I like the front of the Kia better than the Odyssey by a little bit because it's handsome and professional. However, the side view and rear of the Odyssey are better, because I like the lightning bolt cut line at the window and I think the rear of the Odyssey is more interesting to look at. The Kia kind of lost its spunk that it had at the front of the vehicle and instead ditched the angular look of the front for a bulbous rear with uninspiring taillights and a forgettable demeanor. It doesn't necessarily look bad, but it looks like there was a lot more successful effort put into the front of the van. Inside, the Kia is more understated than the Honda, with a more upright dashboard and traditional gear selector and gauge cluster. I tend to like the Honda's styling slightly more, but they're very close regardless. I think the Honda gets a 4.5 for styling and the Sedona gets a 4.3. This category is where I rate how well each minivan can haul a family and add in any miscellaneous features that don't fit into other categories. The Sedona seats 8 passengers with a 60-40 split folding rear seat. 
The second row of seats have slide and stow seating, which allows the seats to be virtually out of the way of the cargo hold. This is nice because you don't have to remove them to have access to that area, but it is not as good as Chrysler's Stow and Go, which fold into the floor. The Sedona has 12 cup holders total, and in the cargo hold, there is 33.9 cubic feet of space. That increases to 78.4 with the third row down, and 142 with the second row slid forward. The Odyssey also seats eight with a Magic Slide second row and a 60-40 split folding rear seat. The Magic Slide is to make room between the second row for easy access to the third, but you'll still have to remove the seats fully if you want to use the Odyssey's maximum storage capacity of 140.7 cubic feet. With those in place and the second row down, you get 86.6 cubes, and then with all seats in place, you get 32.8. The Odyssey has class-leading cup holder volume, though, with a total of 15. Though it pretty much matched the cargo capacity of the Sedona and topped it with available cup holders, in my practice, Magic Slide is no match for Stow and Slide. The Kia gets a 4.4, and the Honda gets a 4.3. These are the final points for each van, out of a possible 35. As you can see, the Sedona won this comparison. However, I think it's again worth returning to that reliability rating that the Odyssey got, as it got docked about a point over what I generally assume Honda reliability to be. Either way, clearly the Sedona won the value proposition, so if you're looking for bang for your buck, the SX Sedona is the way to go. If you're looking for the most advanced powertrain and best fuel economy, the Odyssey should be your pick. Whichever you decide on though, I can nearly guarantee your satisfaction. They're both truly fantastic vans. Thank you for watching.